Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Rainy Day Reactions with Chris and Nia. Today we're going to start Season 3 of Bates Motel, Episode 1, called The Death in the Family. But first, what happened in the last episode? Uh, Romero saved Dylan, kind of? Not really. Romero and Dylan got rid of a... Uh, what are their names? Fucking Zane and the sister. <laughs> yes. Jody. Jody, there you go. <laughs> How do I remember his dumbass name and not hers? Um Yeah, that's what happens. And then he kinda put Dylan in charge. Or at least wanted for Dylan to take over that business. Mm hmm And Norman and the polygraph. Oh yeah. And then the yeah, that was a weird scene. Really trippy, where he actually blacked out for the polygraph test. Mm -hmm. Leaves us with the big question of, is he going to remember that? Will, yeah, is he going to remember that? Is he going to use that as a tool from now on to, I don't know, remove the guilt? Or is he just really not going to know for this season three? I wonder. Hmm. It'd be I interesting really, if they, like, changed it up for season three. But I don't really? know. I don't know. I feel like it'd be better if he's just aware of yeah. what he's done. It'd be more interesting to watch him kill people that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So It'll make you stop feeling sorry for him. I don't know. Right? Are you ready to stop feeling sorry for him? Wait, what? Are you ready to stop feeling sorry for him? Because I, like I like that conflict yes. of, like, feeling for him and then realizing that, you know. He's... Everybody should die and Dylan survives, and that's the end of this. I'm afraid Dylan <laughs> will dies. eventually die. I know, me yeah. too. <laughs> and this makes me nervous. Death in the family. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Shit. Okay, I don't have any predictions other than my fear of Dylan dying eventually. Same. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Come on, girl. This is after. He's gonna be like, weirdo. I know. You're like 57 years Man. old, Norman. <laughs> don't you think that's weird? Hmm? No, I don't think it's weird. Norman's 18. He, he shouldn't be sleeping in the same bed as his mom. Miss Bates, we're the executors of the estate of Francine Calhoun, your mother. Oh, shit. She oh. died on the 17th. Oh. My sincere condolences. Uh, we're working here. Oh wow! The mom was still alive. <laughs> what? I'm not interested. Pardon? True oh, shit. Oh, by the way, my mother died. Oh. <laughs> what? <Here's your> <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? My mother died. Are you okay? Do you want me to stay home with you? No, I'm fine. I did, like I haven't spoken to her in twenty years. It doesn't mean anything to me. That's longer than he's been alive. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. It feels like it's been so long since, since he's been in school. Since they've shown to school at all. I don't want to go in. You're just used to being home, but you gotta rip off that bandage and just go. I'm not going. <laughs> oh, here she goes. Oh, oh she's gonna make it worse. Get out of the car! <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bad way to Jesus. start the year. Oh my god! That's even weirder. Like, just rage and drive. For real. <laughs> but I'm assuming nobody knew that he was a person of interest, right? Small town. True. Possibly. That looks like some old... With the necklace. Old school ass picture. I'll sit with you while you have your lunch, sweetheart. Oh, fuck. He's seeing her now. I'm so glad you're back, Norman. With seaweed red. That is. Oh, oh. Oh, uh, no, sleep. Oh, never mind. Here we go. Oh, shit. Oh, my God, Norman. <laughs> He's like always running up the stairs right? for some reason. <laughs> this cabin. Oh, it's a different cabin. Is this where he lives? Is it the boss cabin? Maybe not. Looks like it's a new business. Gunner? Oh! What the fuck? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> he looks hella funny. 
Remo told me where to find you. He said you rented this land. <gasps> told me you could use your hand. Hey, that's a good way to get started. Remember he wanted to? Maybe not necessarily with someone, but it's a start. Do you think you blacked out? I don't know. I didn't feel like it. it just what when he's starting to talk to her about it? Yeah. Who the fuck is that? What's that? Bradley? Hey, I'm sorry, that. Mm. The fuck is this? Next victim. T What's your name? Annika Johnson. Annika? Annika. Annika Johnson. Damn, he's like hella staring. She's the next victim. I think I've had my fill of what it's like to work in the drug business. Fuck. I'm with you, Dylan, but I don't know if he's interested. I, I just I want to have my own little farm. Mm -hmm. 99 plants, legally with a permit. I protected you. I, I went out of my way to protect you. I don't know. I, 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 I really appreciate that. Romero? Mm. Okay. You'd be correct. We're, we're not working together, and I can't protect you anymore. You know that, right? Is that bad? Yeah, but what I'm doing is legal, so that shouldn't be a problem, right? Shouldn't be. My ceiling light's out. I can take a look at it for you. Oh, my goodness. All right. She's kind of So wh why are you visiting weird. us? More mm -hmm. Way too interested in what he's well, saying. Um, I work at parties. Parties? What kind of parties? She's a stripper. Big expensive parties with a lot of wealthy men at them. Uh, escort? <laughs> she's a party planner. The way she said it, though. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't have no idea what she does. She's an influencer. <laughs> you seem like a nice girl. I am. This whole interaction is weird. I know, right? Gunner. Is it Gunner? Maybe. How do you know it's just one person, dude? I know. It's me. Oh, uh, what the fuck? It's dead. I didn't think we were gonna see him again. <laughs> Same. Or maybe not yet. I'm my mom. She died. Oh, yes. And there's some cash from the sale of the house. I wanted you to have it. Leave. Oh, shit. Okay. He was really trying to give him money? I still don't trust this guy. Yeah. I don't think you need to go to school. I don't? I looked into it and you could homeschool. I'm gonna make you motel manager. <laughs> no. Yeah. She really changed up a lot from the last time when she was like, I want you to be a normal teen, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. Um, Which it kind of makes sense because of everything that happened, but... No. She just heard about but tax I think you cuts. Go to your bed. Like employing my son. You should. Uh, well, Your Dylan said something to me. Uh, Why do you have to drag Dylan not into good for it? You to be sleeping mm -hmm. in my bed. Because now he's gonna be angry with Dylan. That's you true. You are eighteen years old. How about you just so say you you're eighteen years old? Anymore. Yeah. Boundaries. Why yes. does he get mad? I don't. I don't. Because he's fucking weird. Kidding. How far a walk is it to the nearest auto parts store? Can you give me a ride? That's a ways. Can I get a ride? <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, come on now. My buddy Tommy. I don't want to make small talk. Damn. You don't have to be so angry. What were you expecting? I know I'm your dad. Okay. There was no place safe for us. For me and Norma. Except each other <laughs> not for her i know what's he trying to paint the situation as at least you're not in jail that's supposed to be funny that my <laughs> understanding was that you were supposed to be protecting us in this town you screwed it up for everybody i hope they run your ass out of town are people gonna start turning on them up. i kick your ass you piece of Ooh. oh shit oh my tight. god <laughs> You saw the bar? Yeah, he fucking broke that glass. They're gonna start turning on him. 
So he's basically trying to tell them to understand that this is exactly how it's supposed to play out because that happened, right? I got some bad news at the doctor. Oh, fuck. Are you okay? My lung capacity is diminished. Like a lot. And that's not the reason why I'm, I'm telling you. I just, I hate to hear that you won't be at school anymore. I wish I could leave school. Yeah, we could study together here. If I homeschool too. I don't want you to think I'm like copying you. <laughs> no, I'd like to. <laughs> You are the only reason I like school anyway. I think we should date. What? Norman. What are you doing? Norman! Are you just saying this because you think I'm dying? It's not imminent. No, that's mm. not why. It's, it's just time. You're into the lady in the room number four. Why is he bringing this up? This is like so out of the blue. It's been time for a while. Oh, Emma. Damn it. I was captain. I. I... I always hoped that she would be that person again. She... She took a lot of pills. She, I didn't even know where she got them. And she was sedated a lot. What, they gonna find Is he gonna trash? find something weird from that one lady? Or is he gonna run oh, into her? No, he's gonna be a weirdo. He's oh, gonna be a weirdo. Fuck. I thought he was gonna find something in the trash. Yeah, me too. <laughs> he's a peeping Tom now. This is so weird. Is she gonna see? Oh, oh my god, she's gonna see Fuck. him. Oh my god, can you imagine? Oh shit. She's gonna pull him by his ear. Holy shit. She's gonna go off. What the hell were you thinking? You are the motel manager now. You can't be skulking around the dark, peering into the guest bathrooms. It's not normal. You can't be doing this, period. Mm-hmm. Fuck. That lady's in danger. <laughs> I just thought you were gonna lay down. Just for a minute. Oh, well, I thought we weren't doing that anymore. Just for a night. <laughs> because I'm so sad. <sighs> you love her, you silly woman. <laughs> What the fuck? Who says that? <laughs> what the fuck? That's so cringy. You were leaving. Yes. Yeah, it's true, but the van, if it wasn't the rat hose, it needs another part. They ordered mm. it for me, so it should be here. He's lagging. Yeah. So you decided to drive back up here? Right. Put him in his place. Norman never has to know I'm here. That's not the point. Please. I have to go to town anyway to pick up that new thermostat for room seven. So, um, uh, yeah. I was gonna walk, but why don't I drive with you? You're already stick. fucking up, guy. <laughs> he is jumping to the uh, chance. Two bodies. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes it even feels good. Sometimes. All of these, sex. like, conversations. Sex is sex. We all need it. <sighs> no. Norman. Not, not here, no. Not yet. Turn down that road up ahead. Yeah. That's a recipe for She's not gonna disaster. find the restaurant. Or, yeah. He never showed up again. He never showed up again? Is he just gonna be doing this to her? Yeah, like that should tell you what to expect with Norman. Wow, got there like right after. <clears throat> Is that him alone? Yeah. Oh, he just gave her a ride? Did he kill no. her? Yep. Drove the car back. Right? Make it he look like she her? came back. What the <gasps> fuck? <laughs> it ended. You just fucking met her and like he already killed her? Well, yeah, because that was the perfect chance oh, that's true. to do that. So what do you think about... Mm, um, well, he didn't black out, it didn't look like. Right? I mean, they didn't show it to us, but I think he's come to terms with like what he's done. And so maybe he doesn't really need to black out anymore. Yeah.
right? He makes his own shitty decisions. Yeah. I found this this episode very interesting um, because I think the show is really going to start to be... It's gonna. We're gonna see Norman in a different way. Yeah. And at the beginning of the episode, I was just kind of like, I don't really like this because I like, I enjoy liking Norman and feeling like conflicted about him and like what's happening mm -hmm. to him. So it's like, up until now, we've been talking about like the things that happened to him and his little zones and really kind of feeling for Norman, being creeped out by Norman. Um, <laughs> but now I think we're officially in not feeling bad for norman you know we're yeah we're being introduced to this psycho and he is just our main character now which is kind of strange but i mean i can get on board you know yeah um yeah i don't know i'm i'm interested to see how the show changes because even norma is still it's like an adjustment again um from when we first met her really didn't like her and she really grew on us when they had this overall like normal relationship and now we're kind of back into this i don't know they're they're some of the things that they do make me uncomfortable um and a lot of the things can be in little bits people that we know probably do those things and it's not that weird you know what i mean yeah but or maybe it feels like one but seeing it all together with them is it's what makes it weird. Yeah. I think that's probably the thing, like some people probably fall asleep with their parents or mom or whatever. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. And some people like but, kiss on the mouth and it's the way they do it. Just weird. Um, but like seeing them together. No, weird. yeah, seeing that and then Dylan also has like weird suspicions about their relationship. So <laughs> for him, it definitely doesn't look good. Yeah. Like we feel like Dylan. Yeah. You know, there's much. an une uneasiness about it. Um, and I think that that's probably the most frustrating with Norma in this episode um, because she really went back and forth from being weird to all of a sudden having these kind of normal boundaries um and now again she's kind of giving um norman like conflicting things like she wants this and then she's like oh you know it's weird or whatever you should you know you're 18 and then she kind of goes back to oh well just for one night you yeah. know although i do understand that she's going through something but it just feels they do that to each other too yeah like, they do and it's i don't know it's just kind of strange like it has a tendency to their relationship has a tendency to get weird if they oh, allowed yeah. it but mm -hmm. they're both they kind of push each other back and they do this little dance um to the point where up to this point it hasn't gotten like weird weird but there's just that tendency that like possibility of it and it just makes me uncomfortable and i know it makes you uncomfortable <laughs> oh, yeah oh yeah you know you know what i just realized one if Norman was staring through the lady's window mm -hmm. and then she doesn't come back and her car's there, Norma is going to be like, fuck, he killed someone else. Yes. That's right? what I, that's what I found strange about Norma's answer when she saw him because like seeing someone do something like that. Yeah. And she's just, the way she handles things, it's so strange. Like, you're mm -hmm. the manager. You can't do that. Like, no. It has nothing to do with being a manager. Yeah. You don't do that, period. Exactly. Your son is doing this, you need to address it. You need to figure out what you can do to stop this behavior or whatever, or address the behavior. It's like she's excusing it in, in yeah. like a weird way, right? Yeah. Like, it's not, the consequences for him never go farther than her yelling at him, and it only lasts for a little bit. Yep. Um, and then, I mean, in some ways I was, I was surprised with the way she responded, but at the same time, um, when she started crying about her mom, mm -hmm. it makes me look at Norma kind of like someone that is just always overwhelmed. Like she's always got so much crap going on in her head and problems and drama and trauma happening that I feel like she 
picks and chooses what she's gonna give her energy on and so like yeah. with norman she just like yelled at him and then after that she was like okay i'm done with that because i can't handle that no more and now i'm gonna move on to like the sadness with my mom so she doesn't really she can't really handle an issue for too long i don't know like i just i find norma really strange um but i i did like that back and forth between when she got the phone call and she was just like i didn't i didn't talk to her for 20 years and then she has that like crying about her mom and the ribbon the ribbon scene i really liked it um a lot it really added that like initial i don't care because they weren't really in my life but yeah. then that when it sinks in that they're not in your life there's no chance of them being in your life anymore and yes. that possibility is gone and there's that sadness that comes with that i really liked how they showed that yeah and she kind of sh uh, it's kind of inconsistent it just shows like how she goes from like she made it sound like her mom was important during the ribbon scene and mm -hmm. she wanted her to be like she was before which mm -hmm. kind of made it sound like they were close in some way. Mm -hmm. And then later on, she says, I didn't even know her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it was almost like whoever her mom was when she had the ribbon was almost like a, a dream or like a dream piece of her mom that she never actually met. But she always longed for that. Yeah. To see that. And oh. it's hard to tell what the relationship was between the parents and her. Yeah. Because, I mean, we know the dad is was a douche, but the mom, I, I wonder if they'll, like, expand a little bit on maybe good times that they're, they, they had good times and the bad times and for how long it was. Because maybe it was just when she was, like, a child, maybe. And maybe. then, I don't know, something happened. Um, did you want to add anything else to that? Nope. Okay. <clears throat> and then lastly, Dylan and the dad. <sighs> What do you think about that? I don't know. I don't like this guy. I didn't like him the first time he showed up. Now he's back trying to make people feel sorry for him. Yeah. And he always has like that wet crying face look. And, <laughs> You're and, like the booger. And like his lips are too wet. And it just makes me like, I don't know. It just makes me uncomfortable. I'm like, why is he so wet? <laughs> I'm like, dude, stop I... it. You don't need to do that to make people feel sorry for you. Yeah, like he just he overdoes it. Yeah. <laughs> My biggest frustration with I don't know, like I I usually just write names and then hope that I remember who I'm they are. I'm pretty sure it was in the title somewhere. I put brother Norma. That's all De I put. What's that? Caleb. Caleb. There we go. <laughs> okay. Caleb. There's no boundaries. I think no. that's the most frustrating part with Caleb because it's so obvious what it's obvious that he completely has no respect and no regard for dylan's boundaries yeah. it doesn't matter if norma doesn't know you're here dylan is his own person and he doesn't freaking want you here especially at his cabin meeting him breaking down your car to see him like he doesn't want you and yet here you are with this like sadness and i want to meet, be, spend time with you like dylan doesn't want to yeah Dylan's yeah. too soft, too. And he is. Instead of, like, I mean, if I were him, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. Like, 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 that's what he needs to do. Go off. Exactly. And Dylan's like, get out of here. Uncomfortable. Like, yeah, but, but, like, he doesn't really yell. He's not aggressive. With, he's not aggressive with who he needs to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> huh? And he's going to keep wiggling his way in. He's already talking to Gunner. Talking about construction and whatnot. Dylan's trying to pick up, start, it sounds like he's trying to start a business and mm -hmm. expand and build probably some things. Gunner has in his eyes set on one day having land and a business. So he's already like, I can help out. Yeah. Possibly at a discount and like, you know, he'll be there. And then once you start getting help from him, then he's never going to leave. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then lastly, Romero, what was, what do you think about Romero and what's going on with him and the people that are out of work, Dylan? Well, if Dylan doesn't take over, I feel like, like I said, people are going to turn on Romero because he really has no one 
to somewhat control mm -hmm. towards the top. Yeah. I don't know if he ever controlled forward. Probably not in, like, the other business. But now that they're gone, both organizations are, like, easy targets. They don't have anyone smart at the top. And Dylan was, like, the perfect person to keep Romero kind of just, like, doing his own thing. But now that they have, like, no consistency at the top, all of, like, the lower and people are going to start to turn because they're like they're going to resent the fact they're the that type they of people no that turn easily yeah than other people yeah right romero i feel like he struggles between doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing um it's he has not been brutal with dylan even though if he really wanted to be he could um, show more force to make Dylan be the one on top. Yeah. But Dylan's so nice. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way that he's just so nice about it. Like, Romero's just kind of like, oh, fuck. Right? Like, you can tell he wasn't happy with what Dylan is saying, but Dylan's is, you see the kindness in him that Romero doesn't want to go full on, like, asshole, force him to be the top. But it does sound like Romero will be upset if he doesn't do what he says. Yeah. I just don't know if he will act on that. Um, and I like this Romero not going full on, you know, shady guy. And I hope that he doesn't like, you know, end up being like, what if he has to be the top secretly? Romero? <laughs> right? <That'd laughs> like he just has to do it all to be like a sheriff. But he's also the head guy in this weed um industry here in this town secretly sort of you know yeah but at the same time he was protecting them and keeping him in check yeah like that's gonna be a weird balance to try to keep right while you're a cop the only other person sheriff. i could think of was gunner i was like well go to gunner he's he actually wants to be in the weed what industry. if he does go to gunner I mean, he, be, I would feel bad for Gunner, but <laughs> if I have to pick between Gunner and Dylan, good <laughs> luck with that, Gunner. <laughs> Gunner's gonna come back to Emma, and Emma's gonna be like, "I'm with Norman now." Yes. Oh, speaking of that, wait. Why do you think Norman told Emma to go out? Like, why do you think he did that? I think he has too much time in his hands. Probably. I don't know. He didn't think about it thoroughly. I don't think. Right. I found it strange that he did that after his mom kind of pushed him away from the bed thing. Like, maybe he was either trying to prove something to his mom or he was trying to oh, maybe. maybe be like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I am a man and this is my mother, so I do need to spend some time with someone. And kind of jumped into that idea. Mm -hmm. um, but whew, that's a bad idea for him. I hope they don't drag that along. Like, you saw how she drove away in her car? Yeah. I hope when they come back to the next episode she's just like you know what yeah this is not gonna work for me like i, I really hope that that's where it goes and yeah. not norman being like a shitty boyfriend for i don't know a season or something yeah. you know what i mean yeah that would suck okay i don't think i have anything else <laughs> <laughs> i think it's the longest outro we've had for the show <laughs> i'm not sure we missed some stuff but yeah that's all i got for now same if any of you have anything to add for this episode, just let us know in the comments. Uh, let us know what you thought about this episode. Uh, of course, without any spoilers, make sure you like our video, subscribe to our channel, turn on the notifications, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Bye.